The Battle of Stones River. So in this battle we get 13 to 1. I lose 2,700 and the enemy loses 3,600. The battle could not have gone better. So he has 48,000 and 123 guns. I am at the scaling point. In fact, I, I build a green unit of 1250 and it pushes it uh, over scaling. I build two artillery units and the artillery units um, also drive up his artillery just a little bit. So I have $122,000 and I didn't have to I didn't have to spend hardly anything. I bought uh, some weapons that I wanted to buy. The the army was fine. It was in, in good shape. I get a plus two morale. I think it's plus six. Um, yeah, I'm not saving up reputation. It's just I, I don't have anything that I want to spend it on. So I'm using the ATS strategy of third division has snipers, and I like having in fourth division cav. So. Yeah, first core is heavy in infantry, second core is heavy in artillery, third core is very heavy in artillery. So a nice mix of 20 pound parrots and 24 pound howitzers. Very happy with that. So you see here the units are 1250, except for the units that were oversized that have been bleeding down. Um, nice mix of Harper's Ferries, uh, and then as usual the less experienced units have... Um, the 1855s, which are very good units. And I've purchased all of the 20 pound parrots, 24 howitzer, and seven rifle. So, or uh, six rifle. So, yeah, that last Enfield is the only infantry unit I built. So, basically, this, um, this battle took in exactly the number of units I had. Uh, and then Anything I built drove up scaling, so but not by much. It was like I I bring in twelve hundred and scaling goes up fifty, but I'm I'm pretty much at the bottom of scaling. So twenty reputation. I'm going to get twenty reputation out of this. It'll take me up to eighty two. The enemy army is at sixty three to sixty eight. Um, I think his army is going to have Harper's Ferries, but it turns out he only has Enfields, which is um, a little disappointing. So I, I choose to bring in 18 units, not 20. You can bring in 20. I, I uh, had 19 in third core and, and it came in. What it, what it seems like is if you start fiddling around with delaying your supply wagon, then it will take a unit slot. But if you just bring the supply wagon in where it says, where it comes in by default, then it doesn't. So... 48 to 43, but the big thing about this battle, it, well, there are two things. First of all, you're heavily outnumbered in the beginning, but you're in much, much better terrain. So the reason I have so few casualties, one of the big reasons, is that I'm just in such good uh, cover. So the enemy has very good units, two-star and three-star units. That's, you know, not bad. A lot of three-star units, as you'd expect on Major General difficulty. But, um, and the enemy is scaled to me, so he has only, you know, his units are all about a thousand. And some of them are 800 and 900. Okay, um, fortunately his sniper units are only like 230. His cav units I see are 400 and something, just like mine. I'm trying to keep mine around 450. And But the big thing is he's in the open. He's not in good cover like he was at Parker's Crossroads. And that makes all the difference. So, yeah, I, I need to detach some skirmishers so that I have greater visibility. And I want to exchange as many shots as possible with, with the enemy, um, keeping him in the open and keeping me in this this great cover. And, and I'm in very, very good cover. All these positions are good cover. I don't, I don't need to hold the flag. I'm perfectly happy to fall back. Uh, if I fall back, my snipers will get great shots on the enemy as he advances across the open ground. Doesn't really matter. What I'm concerned about is him uh, turning my flank, which he's going to do. He's going to turn my flank, and that can be that can be a problem. Uh, but, th but that's more of a, um, 
it's more it, it's better used as a threat than as an actual weapon if that makes sense so a human player might put a small force you know what i would do if i were playing against another human i would put a a force behind the enemy line and the threat of what i would do with that force would be greater than what anything i could do with it the ai isn't smart enough to do that so the ai is going to send those three units behind my line which i can't stop him i mean i just can't i don't have anything over there and um so he's going to send those units behind my line and then he's going to try to do something with them right away he's going to commit them to action well the threat of action would tie up more units and be more disruptive than actually trying to do something as you'll see so i can't really stop him he he can successfully push through my line anywhere he wants to i have basically two sniper units on my far right and he has a bunch of great infantry two star and three star he can punch right through that i have two very good units on the right the iron brigade and the, a unit of 1861s um, my units are really good by the way the by investing all that money into veterans my units have an efficiency of 70 i tried to do the same thing you know, uh, boost up my unit size, but put in raw recruits, and it drove my efficiency down to 50. There's a big difference between units with 50 efficiency and 70, and these units are all at about 70. Uh, so over 60 and somewhere around 70. And so they're in great cover. The commander is right there giving them a buff. And, yeah... They're gonna they're gonna do awesome damage. So I, I really need the commander to be helping the units on the front line because they're taking artillery fire plus five cover is nice. And his artillery is far enough away, they're not doing that much damage. So yeah, I think he made a mistake by dividing his flanking force up. He should have kept them together. They would have been a much bigger threat. He brought his one cav unit back where my JF Browns could tear him up. My cav unit can wipe out his detached skirmisher, and that only leaves one cav unit in the rear of my army. So not a big deal. I really want to keep my units out of melee, even though my units can melee. I want to keep them out of melee just because... Um, I don't want my units to get tired. I need them to... If they, if my army gets tired, if I lose condition, I have to retreat. I have to... I can't hold the line. Um, if your units lose condition, then... And they go to zero, then they can't fight. They're, they're just so ineffective. But they can fight. Um, I mean, these guys can... These guys can fight. They can melee if they have to. Like, my unit in the north is only two-star, and it's in melee with a three-star... My commander's right there. I have flanking fire coming into the enemy from north and south, and my unit can fight. I don't want to get in a protracted fight, though, because um, that's a good way to get generals dead. And I do lose two generals in this battle. There's a lot of melee, and I'm surprised I only lost two. So I'm having the guy fall back, and I have this on slow, so I can micromanage this melee. And um, yeah, my my guy falls back, and he takes the three star takes fire north and south, and units that take fire from multiple directions are not happy. So he routes. My unit is fine, and returns recovers. He has two units now that are right on top of my 1861s, so I have the Iron Brigade charge forward, fire volleys. Unfortunately, he fires at the wrong unit, because I didn't micromanage it and tell him to fire at the guy who's the closest. So, yeah. And, and so what I end up doing is I have to shift units around to respond to each one of his attacks. He's attacking with these really good three-star units, and... You don't want to fight these guys one-to-one. -one. You want to gang up on one unit, route it, gang up on the next unit, route it. So I'm shuffling guys around to do just that. And I'm also moving guys 
around to keep them out of melee so they don't get exhausted and I don't lose generals. I start losing generals here and this is going to be this is going to be a disaster because they they won't be able to fight very well if if I lose two generals in in this it's like taking two units from 70 efficiency down to 30 and that would be a disaster. But as it is right now, you know my units are doing really well. Boy, the snipers are just having a good time. I would really like to move the supply wagon to the south, but I'm afraid to because of his uh, cav unit. And I don't know where his skirmisher is. So his cav unit um, is performing a valuable function just by being where he is, by being a threat. So I detached um, some skirmishers just to keep an eye on the cav unit, and I end up detaching, I think, four skirmishers. You can see three right there. I think I end up detaching a fourth one. So just him sitting in the rear of my line, just sitting there and doing nothing, is very, very effective. Um, when he decides to do something with that unit and advance and take some shots on my units, he's very... He's, Actually less effective. Okay, I found his detached skirmisher. He's really under strength. He's only a um, hundred and something. And he's all alone, which should not be the case. He should be with the cav unit. Uh, if he was with the cav unit, he'd be far more effective. So I start to move my supply wagon, and the cav unit goes after the supply wagon. And that was probably a mistake. Uh, what he needed to do was threaten the supply wagon to force it to go back to safety, uh, but now he's far enough forward I can, I can start to hurt him. And his isolated skirmisher unit is going to get killed. So, yeah, his units are less effective now than they used to be. Um, they used to come forward, take five or six shots, fight toe-to-toe. -to -toe. They were pretty strong, pretty tough. And now they're coming forward, and they're, they're only about 400, and they're much, they're weakened. They take one or two volleys, and they're done. The cab is way too far forward and way too... See the cab unit at the rear of my line? That's a bad place to be. His general's in a bad place. I have my cab coming in. Uh, the four detached skirmishers. He got too close to an infantry. I actually turned around and fired at him. Now he's very undersized, and I'm going to have everybody fire at him from all kinds of directions. And when a unit takes fire from all kinds of directions, it surrenders. So, yeah, he's under strength, and he took fire from a lot of directions. He's dead. And he just lost a general, too. So what should have been a absolutely effective move complete disaster. Now I can move the supply wagon without any fear. My units to the north are all doing a great job. I return my detached skirmishers back to their parent unit. You just hit the T button and they just go home and yeah the supply wagon can get a move on and um, mostly my snipers are going to run out of ammo. They're very low on ammo so Yeah, you have to check on your units. Where are they firing? Man, that little tiny... He, he only has 340 men, I think, in that unit. I'm looking at the video. It's a little blurry. Yeah, he was... He was tough. He took a couple of shots. But I wanted to just avoid melee, get back in the good cover, and deliver fire to the enemy. My commander's there, morale and condition are good. Uh, the 24-pound howitzer is doing a great job of um, weakening the enemy. Yeah, all these units are, are doing well. The Iron Brigade already has 900 kills. The Iron Brigade's going to have a great day. 
and we're just getting started. Um, the other unit with 1861s is not doing badly. He's he's been caught in in melee, but even though you know melee is kind of a trade off, so even though my units will get in melee and suffer a few more losses, the melee attribute goes up. So yeah, they'll take some casualties, uh, greater casualties than if they stayed out of melee, but because that attribute goes up, they're actually becoming deadlier. Um, so that by the time they get to Gettysburg, they're going to be really, really good units. That's a pretty big uh, unit. 800, now he's 7-something. I'm going to have to weaken him. McClellan needs to get out of there. Yeah, he's taking shots north, south. Yeah, he, yeah. Okay, so that phase of the battle went extremely well. If I'd had to retreat, that would have been fine. Okay, the, um, I'm in good position now to, um, to do something I've wanted to do, and I want to try it on Major General. Uh, I watched uh, Spectrum. Uh, launch a counterattack against the enemy, and if I was able to hold this position on Major General, I, I want to give that a, a go. I've never done it before. Uh, I've never done it on Brigadier General difficulty, uh, but I'm going to counterattack. So now it's just waiting for the right time. First thing I have to do is resupply all my units before I attack. And as you know by now, I like all my units to have 100 condition before I begin an offensive. So I'm going to do just that. I'm going to get uh, 100 morale, 100 condition. Uh, this thing on the hilltop is great fun. I just need to get my artillery and infantry in the perfect position, and then it, that just becomes a slaughter. And that really shows you the advantage of having good terrain. Um, Stones River versus uh, Parker's Crossroads. Um, having the enemy in the open, taking canister fire to the face versus the enemy in 160% cover the entire battle. My thinking is now, get everybody ready, rested, and get ready for the counterattack. And I'm going to try to, you know, Spectrum was kind enough to give me advice on how to do this. And I'm going to try to execute it. And basically it is you kill everything in the south, and then you kind of uh, destroy all the artillery and infantry that you can see to the right, and then everybody attacks north into that clump of woods. Not the one, the clump of woods is in the uh, corner of the map that you can see right there, but the because that's going to fall easily. But there's a clump of woods north of that. And take that clump of woods, and then after you do that, drive on to the river and destroy the entire enemy force that is right here in this area. But a couple things have to happen, and I think it's actually good that I'm on Major General difficulty and not Brigadier General difficulty, because the enemy is going to attack aggressively across this valley and toward the objective, and that is just perfect for me. The the other thing that's happening is he's moving his infantry north to attack the objective in the north. And that's also perfect because he's exposing his artillery. And I'm watching this happen, and as soon as his artillery is completely defenseless, which means without infantry cover, uh, I'm going to go after the artillery. My first thought was uh, to attack on the, my far right and then come around to the side in the rear of the enemy artillery with snipers and cav. But it turns out I don't need to do that. What, um, what I need to do is just go after the artillery with detached skirmishers. So I first want to secure the far right and the south part of the map, and then kind of get ready to attack the artillery, but boy, he gives me such an easy target. I'm, I'm looking at his infantry in the open, and it's very under strength. 
And this is just suicide over here at the objective. And I love this. I mean, I could, this is like the most fun ever where you make a nice line of artillery and infantry and you just blast away at these guys as they, because they really slow down when they start to go uphill and they just take volley after volley after volley of canister to the face. And it's just a great time. And you, you get all kinds of free experience. Your units are in great cover. He's in the open. It's just a good time. So I go after him with detached skirmishers. He's able to make them rout, no surprise. The detached skirmishers take far fewer casualties and do, um, and he does far less harm. The only thing I'm concerned about is that's the Iron Brigade. If the Iron Brigade doesn't get a shot off on that artillery unit first, that's going to be really bad. I'm going to take losses to the Iron Brigade. So he only has one unit to the south. Uh, it's shattered right away. Okay, these guys, the, the guy I've highlighted right there, he's a little far forward. He needs to back up, so going to have him and the artillery back up just a little bit and then my line will be just about perfect. Yep. Now he's going to come forward, take canister to the face, some volleys of um, musketry to the face. Going to move an infantry unit into the farm to hit him from the flank as well. It's just a really good time. I have a 20-pound parrot needs to get closer to the action and put on some uh, flanking fire. It's just all good for the uh, all good for blue. The blue team wins. So yeah, this guy is you know he's dead. So I get the um, 1861s moving toward the next phase of the battle, which is going to be. Um, toward the clump of woods on the right side. The artillery that he has over there is going to die. I just run it down and kill it. These guys just keep charging. So the my 24-pound howitzers, I got them moving toward the next phase of the battle. This part of the battlefield is uh, over. So, yeah, everything's wiped out. Died right away. Actually had the uh, Iron Brigade charge and the artillery unit, and that didn't last long. Lots of supporting fire from units all around it, and that unit just shattered. The Iron Brigade is a beast, but expensive. Okay, so that last unit is dead, so the Cav can uh, join the battle. So I have two Cav units in First Corps, and I noticed that one of them came in and I had to tell the other one to wait for later, and the other one doesn't come in. So it looks like, and I only had 18 units in First Corps, but the two that I had um, when I did the, orig uh, the original deployment for First Corps, uh, I had to tell two units to wait, and they don't show up at all. So... Yeah, I, I think the the... I go back and forth on this. How many units to put into the army? Um, how many units to put into each corps for Stones River? Because everybody doesn't show up when you want them to. What I decided was to come in with uh, first corps, 18 units, second corps, 18 units, and third corps, 19. And that actually drove up scaling, creating the two artillery and one infantry. Turns out the two artillery and one infantry were completely unnecessary. And coming in with 18 units for each corps probably is about the right number. The, um, the two units that I had set out uh, don't show up until... I, don't, I think they don't show up until... Well, I'll have to, I think they show up in the, the next phase when, when the battlefield opens up. So, but that's not when I need them. I, I need the units right now. So, um, 
if I put 20 units into first core and 20 units into second core, I think they would show up in the next phase too. So yeah, as I'm thinking about it, the right answer would have been put, don't build any more new units, complete waste of time. Um, it, it just drove up scaling and the uh, green unit I created just got like 40 kills. So waste of time. Uh, the extra two artillery units didn't do anything. All the fighting takes place now. So, yeah, this is beautiful. Just look at this. Just feast on this for a while. He's doing nothing to my units, and I'm just blasting away. Yep, and we just do this over and over and over. He's marching up with a thousand men. I'm actually thinking... How can I move that artillery so he gets more kills? Maybe there. Yep, he was a thousand, now he's 870. Fortunately, he's two star, so he hangs around to take a few more casualties. Nice. Here's a nice uh, unit of 900, uh, three stars. Step right up, it's your turn. Have this guy step up so he can get, uh, maybe get a few more shots. And that worked out just perfectly. Yep, a couple hundred dead, and it's all good. Man, he's still taking losses. So yeah, that was fun. That's why I like this battle. I could watch that all day. Okay, I'm letting my army recover condition after all that attacking. And uh, the Iron Brigade is a little tired from all that melee. So we're going to let the Iron Brigade rest. I lost an officer, so I'm going to combine two units. Uh, combining two units, now the, the unit without an officer will perform very badly. Merge a unit in that has a good officer, and then that unit will perform. Uh at, well, it's probably a unit at 60 or 70 efficiency, and it'll perform back at 60 or 70 proficiency, efficiency instead of 30. So, yeah. So the Iron Brigade is recovering. Can start getting people moving forward. So this guy is missing an officer. I'm going to have him just wait a moment, and I'm going to move somebody in. So, yeah, there are two officers. And I'll move the smaller unit in. I don't know if this is true or not, but I read on Reddit that 1650 is the point where infantry units start to receive some kind of a debuff. So I want to keep the units as small as close to 1650 as possible. That two units that have over 60 efficiency merging together, they're going to perform well. And the unit, the unit without an officer, I have two choices, either merge a unit in or just keep them out of the rest of the battle. So what I decide to do is merge a unit in. There'll be 2,000 in size. And, yeah, I I don't really want that guy to sit out. There are two units that both have two stars, very high efficiency, and, um, yeah, they'll be fine. Now the Iron Brigade is back to 80%. Um, 80 condition, very nice. I decide I want to get the snipers around the flank. I'm watching the enemy continue to charge into the Valley of Death. It is a lovely thing. Man, that unit is only 400. Yeah, that sniper needs to get... Uh, I need to do something more creative with that sniper. And there are going to be some opportunities on the far right. So 
So he went forward with uh, 400, dropped down to two something, and then shattered. So his units are being seriously degraded by the minute, and I'm just letting him throw away his, his men. And there really is plenty of time. It's only 10 a.m., Okay, I learned this from Spectrum. Let's go ahead and see if we can't push him out of these woods. Bring up some artillery and support. I think I have three sniper units now over there. I have units to the left of his position, kind of units that wrap all the way around his position. Once I get into the woods, uh, those guys will come in on what will be the enemy flank when the enemy turns to face my army now to the south. These guys will hit him in the flank. And eventually the guys on that really good defensive terrain around the farm and that little clump of trees, they will come in and that will be the rear of the enemy line. So as I get the enemy to turn and face my attack, he'll expose a flank. And in the meantime, he'll keep attacking... Um, so, you know, committing suicide on the hill, trying to take that objective, and that's all to the good. When I finally hit those units, they'll just be smaller and weaker. So that's all to the good. Well, to my surprise, getting into the woods was much easier than I thought it would be. And there's a whole lot less here than I thought there would be. This is just so much weaker a position. I thought this thing would be packed with artillery and infantry and it'd be a bloodbath, but nope. It isn't. My sniper rolls up and gets some shots on his artillery. I have a 20 pound parrot that's going to take some shots on him. Detached skirmishers in the woods are taking shots at him. He's firing canister at detached skirmishers instead of infantry. He's going to lose this. That went much better than I thought it would. Get my general up uh, to give 5% cover because he does have artillery there. And I'm going to put this on uh, double speed because his position just collapses. And it's just, yeah. I have the guys run in much faster, much sooner than I thought they would. I thought uh, I'd have to fight for a while before his flank was exposed, but no, his flank is completely exposed. I have these guys run in. I don't want the guys on the hill to move as long as the enemy is attacking because that's, you know, bonus me. I have a uh, general who just got wounded. And I don't notice it. So I, I need to, because um, I didn't notice it, I didn't uh, merge a unit in. He runs forward and gets into melee while being hit in the flank and rear with... See, I have a whole... Um, I have like a whole circle of infantry units supporting that melee battle, and he had no chance. And he took fire front, flank, and rear and surrendered. So I went ahead and let that, you know, that melee happen, and his position was completely destroyed. So now the rest of the map opens up. I'm about to take all of the woods. Right before this opened up, I moved some, uh, you can see the three infantry units, I got them in position to um, move into the part of the map that was going to open up and block the road. It's just a uh, security measure. So now the guys at the woods move forward at just the right time to hit the enemy in the flank. And his position just crumbles.
Okay, I've placed uh, snipers and my cav on the right, and sure enough, his reinforcements are coming down the road. What I should do is patiently let his entire army just march down the road, but I decide to go after him. But if you can see what I'm talking about, if I just move my infantry up to this line of trees and back it up with artillery, that's kind of my first thought. But um, he's in the open, and my snipers are going to do such good work. Yeah, he's going to take so many hits just going down that road. And my infantry is coming up into the woods just about the time his infantry is uh, marching along the road in the open. He's trying to save those guys that I've pretty much surrounded, and they can't be saved. What what they what a human would do is just rout, just try to get them out of there. What he's doing is he's trying to reinforce them. And yeah, he's attacking with his general. That's not going to go well. Yeah, I brought in a unit of... Uh, a unit with hunter rifles because I have a bunch of them and my thought was he has you know it's a green unit I forgot about creating that guy uh, I created an infantry unit two green artillery units with uh, 10 pounders and the um, the sniper unit with hunters and my thought was he can get experience and get his first star and then I'll give him real weapons um, if he gets a star And he does get a star. As it turns out, he gets his star. Yeah, this is what I mean. His infantry comes in, and it's just in a terrible position. I've managed to get everybody into the woods, and there's a little bit of artillery support, just enough. There's a 20-pound parrot and a 24-pound howitzer. Firing into these guys. My infantry is in really good cover. The JF Browns can take shots on guys all the way to the water with zero cover. So it looks like his units try to retreat. And then they recover a little bit and march back into a suicidal position. It doesn't make much sense. Meantime, my snipers are just racking up kills. Yeah, now my infantry is just racking up kills against pretty much defenseless units. So yeah, everybody's shattered. Capture a supply wagon. And now the bar is mostly blue. So he's going to attack over on the other flank. I'm thinking that's not going to go well. Yeah, I need to detach skirmishers so I have some visibility. And he's just going to step up and take lots of casualties. I love having infantry supported by uh, a row of artillery, snipers on the flank firing into the enemy at distance. It just, yep. So there's an hour left, and... I'm going to go, the guys on the right could just sit out the battle. 
uh, for the next hour, but I'm going to have them cross the river, and it takes a while, and attack over there. This is a very good move on his part, I think, but I have a couple of detached skirmishers over there just for this eventuality. I'll move some infantry over there, and that will be repulsed. So the important thing is I just had eyes on that area, so if he tried anything, I'd be able to get uh, plenty of troops over there in time. And now he has no cover. He has zero cover. Get a little melee experience for the Cav. So I dismount my cab and I'm firing into this guy and I'm not doing a whole lot of damage to him. Now he's in a position of very good cover and this shows the difference between enemies in the open and enemies with very good cover. He can stand there and exchange shots with me toe to toe all day and inflict casualties. So I want to hit him in the flank. I don't want to stand there and um, Hey, he snuck someone in and attacked uh, the rear of my army. Nice move. Yeah, unfortunately, crossing the river, my army's tired, so there's 28 minutes, but I can't really do a whole lot. There are too many units now that are exhausted. So get people in position, try to inflict some casualties. So I've taken the woods, but... There are only 20 minutes left. Before I attack the fortifications, I'd want my units to recover some condition. Uh, it's going to take me a while to get the artillery up, get the infantry in position, and there's not going to be enough time to attack the fortification. So. Oh, there's a brave infantry unit. Yeah, there are way too many units that are flashing uh, the exhausted, um, the exhausted sign. Fighting with exhausted units is just a waste of uh, manpower. They're just not effective. So. Yeah, I'm moving people around, but time is about to uh, about to expire. He's down to 4,500 men. Okay, battle's pretty much over. 4,500 men, 24 guns. I still have 39,000. So I've taken almost no casualties. I saved some generals, as I do. I think I had one killed and one wounded, I think. And, uh... Yeah, I expect the enemy to attack me. He doesn't. By the time I get moving, there's uh, not any time left. So I send, um, I see time ticking down. I throw my guys forward to try to rack up a little bit of experience. I think that's my infield unit that I created. Yeah, that's my no-star infield unit. He gets about 50 kills. So not really good and not really enough time. Yeah, I kept expecting him to attack because he always does, but he did the smart thing. When you only have 4,500, the smart play is don't attack. The enemy's prepared positions. Actually, the smart play would have been flee the battlefield, get out, but... 
that's not an option for the AI, so he did the next best thing, which was consolidate everybody here and wait for me to attack. So, got some kills. My green unit got, uh, you know, 50 kills. So, yeah, with medicine, 2740, uh, killed 36,000, 13 to 1. Happy day. Stones River, great deal of fun. My units, uh, most of my units didn't take too many casualties. They're in very good shape. Yeah, I, I was surprised how few casualties I took. So, yeah, three core, almost three four, full core in a battle. It's a pretty long battle and only took 2,700 uh, casualties. So that's great. Won't be that expensive to rebuild the army. And in second and third corps, it'll be almost entirely raw recruits. So yeah, the unit got uh, 2,000 kills. Um, not bad for units that are mostly half strength. So yeah, 1,900, 1,700. My 1861's got uh, 1,700, only lost 187 because they were in the woods most of the time. 24 pound howitzer got 1700, uh, only 10 guns in that unit. Uh, sniper got 1600, 24 pound howitzer got uh, 1500. The iron brigade got all 1455 and only lost 130. And he was in melee. The 1861s were in melee too. Um, look at this uh, the parrots, snipers, 24 pound howitzers. Not bad. And I'm looking at the tiny losses that most of these units uh, suffered. Some of these guys got very good kills and no losses. I like to do that every battle. Yeah, the two 10 pounders I created only got uh, eight kills each. Wasn't worth creating them. Waste of time. So, yeah, some promotions, and I got a three-star. The Avatar got three-star, and I really need a three-star unit in first division. Um, that command line on all those units is getting... Well, in some cases, it's not enough. So for my units in first division, my best units to perform well, I need a really good division in, commander. So, okay, captured some supplies. That's very nice. He has mostly Enfields, which is a little disappointing. I was hoping for Harper's Ferries. And, uh, yeah. So let's see how the army looks after the battle. Got $180,000, so I have close to $250,000. The army looks good. The army looks really good. 2018-61s. That will be great. Might be able to get um, with the 1861s. I have an infantry, an inventory. I might be able to get two more units loaded with 1861s if I don't, if I keep their numbers down. Got some uh, unit perks. Nice. So yeah, boy, I'm looking at this. Third Corps took almost no losses. Yeah. My little green unit that came in at the end got a couple of kills. So yeah, the army looks good. And let's see what happened to the manpower pull. Drove the, drove the number down. So we're in really good shape right now, and we have Chancellorsville coming up. So that's very good. Chancellorsville, I'm looking forward to Chancellorsville. That should be a very good battle. It usually is a complete slaughter for the South. Couple of tough battles before Chancellorsville, but uh, but we'll see. 
if if we can win the battles going into Chancellorsville, we should be in very good shape. We're going to get a ton of reputation too. So inventory wise, I should have purchased some Harper's Ferries. I'm surprised that there's nothing, almost nothing in inventory for me to buy. But there are 1861s. So I guess I'm going to shift over to 1861s and then start pushing down the 18, uh, the Harper's Ferries I have. Yeah, pretty much I'm in good shape. I'm really don't need that much right now. I guess I need a couple more units for Chancellorsville to have three full cores. I really should check. Is Chancellorsville 20 units per core or 24? So if it's 24, I'm, I'm missing a few units. I'm, I'm going to have to build a few units. If it's 20, I already have pretty much the army. I only need a couple more units, and I'll have 20. So good. I can buy, buy uh, five more good officers. Yeah, I want to get economy to 10 so I can sell. So I can go ahead and sell some weapons and uh, training to 6. Very, very good outcome for... Stones River. I hope you enjoyed it, and um, yeah, I'll see you in the next battle. Thanks.